All right, what's up, everybody? I am here at Phoenix in test session mode, uh, driving a cup car, bringing you an updated Phoenix cup setup. A uh, lot to say here, and I don't talk and drive real well at the same time, so I'm trying to get all the talking out ahead of time. Uh, I put out a Phoenix setup several months ago, ran about a 25.9 with it, and it was pretty good, but it got a little loose for some people's tastes on the long runs. And it did get a little bit loose, so I've been working on a new setup. Uh, this one is a couple of tenths quicker at around a 25.7. It seems to be really good on the long run about not getting loose. And I can get a full fuel run out of this thing. I have ran a few fuel runs with this. Had to pit with one lap to go. Would have been sputtering if I tried to push it any further. So got a full fuel run out of it. So if you put those together, uh, you've got a 25-7 lap time. You get a full fuel run out of it. And it really doesn't get loose on you on the long run. That's kind of like the trifecta. That's a pretty good combination for Phoenix. Now, I ran a 25.7. If I can get a 25.8 here, something within about a tenth of my best uh, on video, I'd be real happy with that. And there it is. And uh, with that 25.8, I can now talk to you guys about the line I am running. And then we'll show the setup and everything. A uh, couple more things about this setup. Um, it burns the right front tire in the early part of the run so you're going to see it burning off much more quickly in the early part of the run but then as the run goes on it evens out and the right front or right rear catches up with it by the time you're at the end of a fuel run the right rear is going to be a little bit ahead of the right front in terms of uh, how it is wearing and you should make it to a full fuel run but your right rear will probably be in single digits on that tire wear by the time you're done um Looking at that right rear tire, here's my best advice for making it last. Watch those temperatures. Now, the temperature on the right, on the right rear, is always going to be the lowest. Okay? But look at the two temperatures, the middle temperature and the left temperature. Try to keep those as close together as you can. If the middle temperature is the highest, go down in your tire pressure. If the left temperature or inside temperature is the highest, go up in your tire pressure. But try to keep those tire pressures as or tire temperatures as close as you can, and that will help make the the tire last a little bit longer. Um, but with that being said, let's talk about how I get around Phoenix. I try to be outside here, right up against the wall, coming into turn three. I lift just either right at or right before these three cones here. I lift and apply a little bit of brake and I try to get all the way down to this inside wall here. I try to get about as close to it as I can. I am not on the brakes real hard but I do kind of ride the brake a little bit. Okay, So it's not a stab the brake and get off it and it's not a real hard brake but I'm kind of on it for, for a little bit. Then I get off the the throw or off the brake, let the car rotate through the center, um, and let it kind of drift up a little bit. So I'm entering below the suggested line, but then I'm going to drift up a little bit as I start to come around exit. Uh, I try not to have the wheel turned all the way to the left. If you have the wheel turned all the way as far as it will go to the left, you're going to scrub off some speed. I'm probably about 75 or 80 percent as far as I can turn to the left but not all the way that helps maintain a little bit of speed um, I try to be on the gas here a few um, a few car lengths before the the Geico restart zone up there that's painted in blue and then I am coming out of here and I am letting the car drift a little bit above the suggested line and then as we get out here I'm staying above the suggested line and then I'm starting to do the big crossover about where uh, and I'll back up here so you can see it about here where it says NASCAR Cup Series and I'm not exactly sure where but I think it's about here I don't have a specific mark that I use here but it's probably about here I start diving down and I cut this dog leg off so by the time I get down to the start finish line I'm actually probably down here and I'm trying to cut this dog leg off so I'm trying to shorten the dog leg then I'm going to be working my way back up uh, across the track out to the wall and then you got these two orange signs here on the outside wall 
about in between them I am going to um, break a little bit and turn the wheel and it's the same concept as before I'm trying to break and I'm not on it very hard but I'm on it for quite a ways and I try to get down here entering this a little bit below the suggested line by the time I'm middle of the corner I am off the break and letting the thing rotate when the thing settles I am trying to get hard on the gas and accelerate out of the corner same concept as turning the wheel. I don't like to have the wheel turned all the way to the left. I feel like that's scrubbing off speed when I'm going all the way to the left. And then, um, you know, try to keep the car about on the suggested line or maybe just a hair below it as you exit. And then um, uh, you drift out to the wall and you're on the back stretch headed towards turn three again. So that is how I get around, Phoenix. Let's uh, go to the garage and look at the setup here. So with this setup, um, not exactly sure what to say. There's a lot of stuff that looks pretty typical, uh, but um, let's talk about some of the unique things. I went up really high on the wedge and really high on the front weight, and that was because I wanted to get the car tightened up, especially early in the run, and I didn't want to get loose when the tires started to wear. So I got really high up on the front weight and wedge. Um, I went. I usually go 1,200 on the front springs and usually go 600 on the right rear. I'm typically a little softer on the left rear, but again, to try to keep the car from getting loose, I went way up on the left spring and maxed it out and matched it. Uh, so I am way higher up on the left spring, and again, that is in an effort to tighten the car up, keep it from getting loose. I'm not sure about the tire pressures, how much I varied from what the defaults were. Uh, but I did play around a lot with this right rear tire, trying to get it to a point where it didn't burn off too quick. And a lot of times you can go up in tire pressure to not get it burn, to burn off, but by going up on that right rear, you're also making the car looser. So you're kind of trading one problem for another. You're, trying, you're trading tire wear for an ill-handling car. This is the happy medium that I found. Um, what else? The track bar. Usually I have the right track bar higher, but I cranked that right track bar down tw quite a bit because what I wanted to do was, again, that right track bar going down on it tightens the car up. So this helps keep the car from getting loose on the long run. Uh, so I had to crank that right track bar down to where it is quite a bit below the left track bar. Brake bias is at 80%. I used to always run 90% and I'm starting to get away from that. I'm starting to learn that the sweet spot is somewhere between about 75 and 82 or 83. Uh, that I don't need to run it at 90% that I can get better results running this. Um, wheel lock is 8. I think if you're running a controller you probably want to go up to 10 or 12 on the wheel lock. But if you're on a wheel obviously this is fine. And then lastly, this is a three-gear setup, so I run it in third gear unless I need to save fuel. That 1.2 and 3.4 comes out to a final uh, gear ratio of like 4.08, I think. Uh, and if you stick with a four-gear, I think you either got to run a 4.11, uh, which really had me hitting the rev limiter way too early in the front stretch, or you got around a 4.00, and that was just uh, too tall of a gear. I just didn't have much drive off the corner of 4.00. So I wound up running this three-gear setup that comes out to a 4.08. Um, that's it. That is Phoenix. I think this is a little bit better setup. I'm going to release this video, and then I'm going to it for a couple of days before I take the old video down. But I am going to be getting rid of that old video. Um, try this out. Let me know what you think. Uh, be happy to hear your feedback. I think you're going to like it better than the old video. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you guys for all the feedback. Most of it's positive, but when I get some negative feedback and somebody tells me, hey, your setup's too loose in the long run, you know, I, I try to take heed to that and try to address it. And that's why you get some updated setups like this. Uh, but here you go. This is the Phoenix setup. Try it out. Let me know what you think. And I hope it turns some fast laps for you. And hope you guys have a great day.